you're either doing your own tax return or maybe you're working with a tax agent to complete your return, there are some common mistakes that you want to avoid. As a tax agent working with nearly a thousand taxpayers every single year, there are some common mistakes I see clients make. Here are four of the most common. The first one is they fail to chase up their deductions. If you don't include all your deductions that you've legitimately incurred in your return, you are doing yourself a disservice because you will be paying more tax than you need to. The easiest way to maximize your return, claim all the deductions you're entitled to. Now this might sound like an obvious thing, but why don't people do it? It's because they put themselves in a situation where it's just too hard for them to find them. So they haven't kept any records along the way. And when I ask, did you spend any money on this? They go, oh, I can't be bothered finding it. Yeah, I did, but I don't know the amount. The easiest ways to fix this is to be aware of what you can claim, because it's going to give you an idea of what you should be keeping the receipts for. Asking for copies of receipts when you get the charts and keeping up to date throughout the year. If you do this, then it doesn't become a big job. And then when your accountant asks, did you spend any money on this? You can say, yes, I did. Here's the amount. The second area is people fail to include all of their income in their tax return. Now, this is something that's actually on the ATO hit list for 2024. And in particular, those that lodge early, they're coming after you if you fail to include all your income. You need to include all of your income the first time around when you lodge your return. So this includes things such as interest, dividends, or capital gains events if you've sold some shares or crypto. The reason why it's so important to do it the first time around is because if you don't, the ATO potentially could give you fines, interest, or penalties. What you need to do is making sure you're including all this income, even if it doesn't show up on the ATO pre-fill report. And this might be because it's still early in the tax year and this information hasn't been provided by third parties such as banks yet. You want to make sure you go and manually collect that data and manually input it in. Now, as a tax agent, it can be hard for me to know whether all your income has been included because I only know what I know. My first point of call, which you can do as well, is to look at the previous year's return. What types of income did you include? Maybe previously you've had some dividends and you haven't got any records of selling them shares. So of course, we're going to ask where is that information for this year? If it's not on there, then we're going to look at what's actually on your ATO pre-fill report because they're going to get income information from different third parties. Great, we know what it is, we can include it. If it's not on either of them, I might ask you the question, you need to tell me if it's actually happened. I did have a client last year that I said, did you sell any crypto? Their answer was no. And then six months later, they got a letter that said from the ATO, we think you've sold some crypto through the year. When I've re-asked the question to the client, they said, oh yeah, I did. It wasn't a lot though, so I didn't think I had to include it. We had to then do an amendment. It cost them more money and it could have just been sold by including all of that income when they first lodged their return. If you are looking for someone to help you lodge your return, my business rich accounting would love to help. You can head over to our website, find out about more what we do. We have all our pricing on there and you can get in touch with us. I'd love to work with more of you in this upcoming financial year. Now the third one, and it is probably the biggest one, there is no record keeping place for a lot of people. If you don't have a record keeping system, you are putting yourself in the biggest situation where you're gonna stuff up those first two things. You're either gonna miss deductions or you're gonna miss including income. What you wanna do is put in a system that works for you. Now, whether that's something like Google Drive where you can scan and save your receipts, maybe it's Dropbox where you can do something similar, or maybe you're using the ATO app where you can store receipts and deductions in there. Whatever you do, find a method that works for you. What you want to ideally do is have a method where you're doing stuff on an ongoing basis so you're not then having to scrounge around and do it at the end of the year. You could just store your receipts in a shoebox and then pull them out and then have them all over your desk and you're trying to find the right ones, which ones are actually tax deductions and which one were your grocery bills. You want to make sure that you've got a system a little bit better than that. Yeah, ideally, you go that next step where you're digitally storing the receipts, but you're also putting them into a spreadsheet where you're starting to know how much deductions have I actually had through the year. And then when it comes to the end of the year, you've actually got a good idea of how much refund you're actually going to get. Where possible, ask for digital receipts. If you've got a digital receipt, you never have to worry about the receipt fading or getting lost. Do that and it solves some of the issues. You know, if you go to Officeworks and they say, do you want a digital receipt? Say yes. At the end of the day, the ATO doesn't care how complex it is for you to keep records. The obligation is on you to keep those records, so make sure you are doing it. And then the fourth one is people listen to the wrong people. I don't know how many times I've heard someone say, oh yeah, I claim this because my friend at work claimed it. Just because someone else has claimed the deduction does not mean you are eligible to claim it. Even if you work at the same workplace, doesn't mean you both will have the same deductions. Another key thing to remember with this is just because someone has claimed something previously, and that someone could be you, does not mean that deduction was actually a legal deduction. We have a self-assessment system. So you lodge your return, the ATO will give you your refund typically, but that is assuming that you've done anything correct. That doesn't mean they've checked over and ticked everything off. They could still do an audit on you. And just because you didn't get picked up on something one year doesn't mean it was right. and doesn't mean you can keep including it every other year. 
it's no different to someone that speeds on the roads, doesn't get caught, doesn't mean they were doing the right thing when it comes to the law. One of the things that people will do to try and increase their refunds is to avoid these common mistakes. But another area is to try and maximize their deductions. In this upcoming video, I'll go through seven unique deductions that individuals may be able to claim in their tax return. I thank you for watching this one and I hope to see you over there.